sum up what we have been able to achieve till now and we will look at a small thing that I have put here and uh, share with you that what have we done till now. So let's move to the teletop and look at we first looked at the engineering needs we talked about why engineering for 21st century and we found out that the engineering for 21st century is there because of these requirements one you need different skills to survive in this world so you need different skills the two the world is moving at a much faster pace and therefore the scope the speed and the scale are very different so you need to be different so we have the three s and then the third that we were looking at is what is the expectation from the industry from you so it talked about four things it talked about uh, problem solving it talked about decision making it talked about original thinking and it talked about entrepreneurship and that's where it is there along with that we had a very interesting fact and that was you and we looked at why you look at and why do you need this new process and why do you need design and innovation intervention in engineering and it is because you need better jobs you need more salaries you need better companies to work with and most importantly you want to have better job roles you don't want to be a technician or a supervisor you want to be a creator you want to be known for something that you created as an engineer and that's why we were looking at what could be there that can suffice and we then looked at the second point which was why do you need design and innovation and what is design and innovation so we looked at this factor very clearly and found out that design when you talk about is talking about being holistic it is about real life it is about solving problems in the real world it is inclusive it is basically a problem solving tool so we looked at design as a planned contextual creative activity with a purpose so that's what we when we looked at design when we looked at innovation we tried to see what are the best practices in the world that you can use in terms of a process to come up with new innovation so that's when the, we looked at the third th which was best practices and here we could see curtsy some of the examples we saw from Stanford we saw from IDEO and we saw what models they are using currently and we looked at these best practices till now and we were able to see two videos in which it was exhibited what is the type of culture what's the kind of culture that is required you know, that's very important when you talk about what's the kind of culture and what's the kind of process and where do you begin so one of them started of course with the user and when you looked at the other one they started with the product so we looked at the best practices so till now let's look at what has been your experience so if I was to ask you and to take a minute and think about that what is the kind of experience that you had till now that we looked at the comprehensive picture of the various aspects and the project so if we were to talk about the experience this is the closest because this is a one-sided lecture I'm talking here and you are looking at your screen so how do we make it more interesting so to look at that and make it more interesting we were trying to understand from the theory we were also looking at what are the best practices and I feel that the experience is the most important because design is all about doing so design is all about doing and when we look look at doing part we also looked at that while you do what are the various process what are the steps and what are the uh, tools that you can use with this friends this is where we are right now now to move ahead we will get into the section where it is very interesting to look at design driven innovation framework for engineering academic projects so friends let's go back to the uh, presentation